Christine Vous serez très nul. Ok, pas de problème. Boubou. Bou, bou. Un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. C'est bon. Ok. Pour Philippe. Ouais. C'est toi qui oui, c'est toi qui as introduit. Hein. Tu as fait, fait un petit. Allô, Anne Renam. Je vois le mic. Ok, ok, il pas mal, il est Je me prends encore un coca.
Allô Ça va voilà. Ça va Bien. <rire> bisous, bisous. <rire>
who is very technical, so that you can build a solution. So um, concerning this, um, the, the, the exercise of tonight, this is really a hands-on uh, workshop. It's, it's, it, 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 it's in garage format. Uh, so the idea is that um, we will leave PowerPoint slides behind for once, and, and we want to start doing things. We want to see um, what and how you can create a, a virtual currency. But we also want to start a discussion with you and work and, and play the game about discussion on how are we going to implement it? Why are we using this currency? Does it have to be a fixed price or not? Uh, how are we, go are we going to use it for, for our sponsors so that, that they can give, me a give you an amount of money to the, to the cooperative and then we can distribute it? Or are we going to use it to, to promote innovation are we going to use it to drink beer are we going to use you know all these questions that things that we we, we will be um, talking about the interesting thing about it is that there is no right answer so so if the group decides to go in one direction and and i cannot convince you to do it in the other direction that i had in mind it's your it, it's your decision basically yeah but i would really like to have a a, a, a coin that is used with all the different technical communities in, in, in Belgium and that we can, we can share time and share, uh, 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 sh uh, use the coin to, 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 to benefit for whenever this the, the, the idea becomes a commercial uh, element. So um, without further ado, I will pass the word to, uh, to Jean. Uh, Jean is, uh, has the experience uh, uh, in, in building blockchain. He, he started the uh, the, the Belgian Bitcoin organization. So he's been there from the early days. Uh, he's one of the lucky ones who managed to buy some Bitcoins that uh, when they was not really, uh, they were not e expressed in euros yet. So uh, this is Mac. Okay, thank you. So um, actually, we had a, a small chat uh, a week ago or two weeks ago, and uh, Philippe asked me, "Yeah, I would like to have a kind of a coin uh, to be able to." And instead of euros, in and uh, that people would be able to pay and exchange the services in that coin. And um, is I, I, I told him, um, if you keep it simple, guess I can do it in two hours. I can create a coin. It won't be a crypto currency like Bitcoin, but it will be uh, a coin existing on a public blockchain. And basically, uh, if I give you uh, some some of the coin, then you are really owner of this coin. I can take it back. Uh, so, one of the one of the concrete use cases that Philip wanted to to have is uh, we are at the bar, and uh, you want to pay uh, for your beer, and uh, you don't want to have people pay in 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 euros, uh, but uh, pay with a crypto currency or at least a, a, a currency which is on on the um, on a blockchain and so that if you pay the, the bar then uh, you, you you just scan the, the address of the bar and uh, the money gets uh, gets into it another challenge for him was to say well uh, i don't want this to be a uh, bitcoin because i told him but uh, just uh, ask people to pay in bitcoin then or in but then the, the you know uh, the, the the price of bitcoin is is is, is moving and then I referred him to a kind of asset-backed tokens. I don't know whether a few of you, a few guys, um, know Tether or through USD. And so basically, I w I we will create uh, the equivalent, but then specifically for digitizer. And so, in, in two hours' time, I was able to create. Um, this coin. So the basic idea of uh, such a coin is that uh, at a given time you, you, you have some trust in the system. Uh, it's not a, a purely crypto. But so you have here I have one euro and it's 100 cents. So I put the 100 cents in the bank and if you know a little bit of accounting then it means that you have, you, you have 100 cents in your accounts and then you write 100 coins which are actually kind of 
thing saying I owe you uh, the money if you present me uh, the token. So let's say I've collected the 100 uh, cents, okay, and now I will create the, to the token. And this I want to make on a public blockchain, not a private blockchain, could be on a private blockchain, but I, I want it to really exist um, on a blockchain. And actually, you would have then, in theory, to create uh, a smart contract and publish it to the, the, the thing, and it would be difficult. But actually, what I want to demonstrate to you is that you can do it with off-the-shelf software. One of the, <coughs> one of the thing is to uh, use here uh, the site Token Factory uh, netitfly, uh, dot com, which allows you to create a token by uh, supply saying what would be the amount of token you want to create, giving a name, giving de decimal places. That's because it's working on the Ethereum uh, platform and uh, you I'm using a standard which is not very important here, but it which is a ERC-20, which requires things to be expressed in units and then with decimals, and then a, sebel, uh, a symbol, and then you push create. Now, to ease a little bit the, the process, um, I have already <coughs> created a coin, and this coin does exist on the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain. And it's called Digit Iser Coin Test 2. Why the name test? Because I didn't want to spoil the name that exists that would have existed on on the blockchain forever. So I called it test. And I put a two because I just screwed up the first time. <laughs> and so I had to do a second iteration. And this coin is existing at the address. So it's the address of the smart contract that has been created on the first page, uh, which is just a kind of, without using technical terms, is the, <coughs> the thing managing the, the coin. And you see that the total supply is uh, 100 uh, units. So this coin exists. Uh, I was fully owner of it and um, today, I distributed some of them, and you can see uh, here that I sent at a given time. Uh, yeah, the the name of the coin is of the the, the abbreviation is whoop, Digitizer Coin Test Two. I I just put the address of this uh, smart contract in. Uh, uh, this part on the left, on the right, sorry, which is only a kind of a uh, wallet. I simpli simplify its MetaMask. And you see that I made a few transactions uh, whereby if I look um, at the balance that I have today, I still have .75 um, uh, so it's 100 with two decimal places, so it's .75 uh, 2075 uh, uh, digit either coined to on my account. Now where are where is the balance? Uh, but the balance is in another tool which is off the shelf, which is well, I just googled, and it's called Cipher, and Cipher is just uh, an application which allows you to take those type of contracts that are very easy to con to create and that are very standardized, it's called ERC-20, the same standard, yeah, and then you say, um, you give once more the address of the smart contract, and <coughs> it's in small type, but you can see that the balance is just here, it's, it's written in, in the small, 0 0.25, okay, so, so far so good, um, no, uh, I would say that this is the bar and I, I want to have my coke and I want to pay for my coke. Easy, easy. I go here 
um, I always get detail. So I get um, an address which is expressed into the form of a barcode or, or a um, QR code. Okay, so I will do it on my screen. Oop. But basically, what I do, I say, I go there, I say, I want to send from this wallet to this address that I will scan. And I will give an amount of digit ether coin that I want to pay to the bar. Okay, so I say that, I scan here. Okay, it got the address, and I say that I want to send 0 0.05 digit either coin test 2 to the bar. I say continue, and so then it will propose me to send, and he, al he, always, he, he also asked me to pay some gas for the transaction. So we are working on the Ethereum platform. So you, it's a platform that is processing uh, smart contracts for you. People have to, to do some work to do this, uh, to execute and maintain the consensus about those smart contracts. So you have to pay them. Now, he proposed me just crashes. That's also reality of today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he, he proposed me to uh, authenticate. I say I pay. And the balance is not dot .25, but dot .2. So it took out 0 0.05 and put it uh, on the Yeah, okay. And then after some time, because we are on a uh, public blockchain, so it takes time the to have the transaction to be accepted by the public uh, blockchain, it, it eventually be on my account up there. So, so far, uh, no, no more uh, thing to do. Uh, so it's, it's very buggy. I, told I tell you it's two, two hours uh, work. It says uh, failed transaction, but usually it still works. Okay, one minute ago, view on a test scan. And it's a, it's a success. So I can see that the transaction has been accepted by the network. So in theory, in theory, hey, I get here, you remember it was dot .75 and now it's dot .80. So basically we, and so uh, that's the bar and uh, let's say I'm the owner of the bar and I say I want um, to get some uh, of my money back. Uh, then I could sell my token to the bank that will give me the euro because the bank has got some of the, of the money. So basically by doing so, we have created a currency which is stable because it has an equivalent in uh, euro and it ensure uh, without any, possible possi uh, any possibility of fraud, ownership of the coin. So if you, li if you think about it, uh, there are many, many uh, local currencies I don't know, you know, uh, in Brighton, there is one in, in UK, I think, and there are local currencies. Basically, we reinvented the whole technical part of those type of currencies uh, on the blockchain. And the only requirement is that you pay some ether to pay for the transactions. It's is that clear for more or less for everyone? So basically, it's it's it no no rocket science. That's really the the, the basic of um, 
of creating a coin on, on a blockchain, uh, not a, a cryptocurrency with m a mining, etc., uh, but a coin which is which represents it's uh, which represents a, an asset which are which are euros. Now you can have here we have a fixed amount of coins. You can uh, be more sophisticated, <coughs> create a variable amount of coins allow for creation of new coins, allow for uh, destruction of coins that are not not anymore used. You could also have a monetary policy which would be different, which would say to, uh, to, to get one coin uh, um, you, uh, you, you have to pay one cent. Um, and in the system if you go back and you say here is my account, the, the person will give you one, one cent in, in, in exchange. You could have a situation and some people, some uh, system of local currency says, no, I give you only 90, uh, 0 0.09. And so you are encouraged to uh, stay in the system and uh, spend your coins uh, instead of uh, redeeming it for cash. So, and if you do that, you, you have an another uh, monetary policy, if you want. Huh? Your money is losing uh, value. And then you encourage another type of uh, behavior, which is uh, exchange it exchanging it uh, with people in the local economy instead of keeping it uh, for yourself. So this system is working as long as we are totally sure that no one, that I cannot, me, create new coins and not have the 100 euro or the 100 cents uh, in my pocket. Otherwise, I would just create new coins, beer, pay for the beer, but there is no real money uh, in, in, in the bank, uh, so to say. And uh, then you would be in a situation where uh, someone asks to be reimbursed and uh, there is no money uh, for uh, reimbursing him. So, in theory, if we do that, uh, we should have an auditor that constantly checks that uh, the amount is in the bank. And this is basically what Tether, for those who know Tether, does not do very convincingly, is they never quite fully prove that they have enough dollars to cover the token that represent dollars that they have emitted. And there are other, tr like true USD, which are it's uh, so somewhat better uh, to it. But okay, this is a very simple uh, currency that we can implement. I think uh, that what I can show with this is that the technicality is simple. But then I give I give back the word to you and to Philippe first. Is uh, what do we want to do it? Uh, so I can avoid manipulating <laughs> coins at the bar. Um, um very easily but uh, i guess we have also other use cases that we want to uh, uh to implement with this but before uh, that philip uh, takes the word are there questions about this demo yes Sure, sure. Uh, this is a system where, where there is no minting. Uh, so th this site is uh, token factory does not allow the amount of coins uh, to be changed. Uh, but you can perfectly have a coin where one responsible pe person can, uh, because I was the responsible person creating the token, but you can have a situation where you allow this person, the smart contract would be very easy, saying the owner of the contract can't mint money. And let's say that you say, ah, yes, no, it's uh, Jean, I give you, uh, uh, I trust the system that the owner here, Jean, 
can raise the money. Okay, so we say two, uh, 200 token, but what you, would, what you normally would have to check is that I do that only if, if I have 200 in the bank. But yes, and you can even have system where you can destroy money. Uh, that, that is, but it's more sophisticated. It was not doa doable in, in, in two hours time. But uh, basically, if you go to ethereum.org, one of the very first example is create your own coin and you have uh, minting and uh, burning of coins, which is uh, foreseen. And there you can do the full thing where you develop the smart contract, you see the smart contract, and you, um, uh, you can, uh, actually you can see, if I'm not uh, mistaken, the smart contract here. If I go to uh, Ether scan, Ether, Ether scan, and I go to this, to the address of this, you see the, um, so you see, so Etherscan is just an, a kind of browser uh, on the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain, okay? And you see that Digitizer Coin Test 2, does exist there. It's not fake, eh? it's, it's really on the blockchain. Eh? It's really there. And you see that in total, there has been six transactions, okay? And you can see the code that has been, the, 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 the code of the smart contract is here. Just this code is so simple that it doesn't allow for creation and destruction of uh, money. That's that's the reason why, but you could do more sophisticated. Yeah, basically, um, some people are tokenizing uh, gold, diamonds. I'm tokenizing uh, things in the in the energy sector. It's basically a variation um, around this theme. And uh, what I wanted to show is that the tools are there to uh, just scan, pay, uh, etc. Exactly, exactly. And you, yeah, the question. So if you want to tokenize diamonds, you have to maintain credibility that you have as many diamonds that you have token representing diamonds. Basically, it boils down to that. I'm doing it in another sector, in the energy sector. I won't go into detail. We are tokenizing something and we prove at every time, but it's trust. Huh? Uh, at that level, there is trust that we are not creating more tokens that the underlying asset. I think for diamonds, you want to have non-fungible tokens. So th th in this case, with money, it doesn't matter if you have one euro that is uh, a bit uh, torn or a bit used and a new one, it doesn't matter. They are the same, they're exchangeable. But for diamonds, you don't want that. Uh, could so be, so indeed, could be. Uh, in, in my That's case, in the, in, in the thing I'm tokenizing, it's definitely a non-fungible token. So to make it uh, simple, a non-fungible token, it's like a crypto kitty. For the people who know it, it's it's something which has very specific characteristics, which which are not uh, the same as another one. So it's or it is this building, this apartment in this building, and it's not the apartment next door because the apartment next door maybe is uh, smaller or has one room uh, more, etc. So it's a specific. But you can do it fungible, so th that's the idea where one unit is equal to the other. Or you can do it non-fungible uh, when the, 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 the good is very specific. But I think in the case we are speaking here, the idea of, of paying services to each other, paying beer, etc., etc., is more similar to a fungible. That's the reason why I, I took it. But you can very easily create a non-fungible token. I think there are also sites. I haven't looked in detail, but I'm also almost sure you have uh, sites that allow you to create non-fungible token with a push of a button.
Other questions? Jean, uh, I have this question on, on the audit. Yes. Um, how, how does that work? Who audits it? You just do what you, s you, you take the, l the, the link that you had and then you, you, you look at it, but, oh but how do you audit it? But it's very I it would be very easy. Then the auditor would come and say, show me if, if you have uh, 100. So he would, he would look, he would look at the blockchain. Mm -hmm. No, it can have its own blockchain, etc. Or he would go, um, basically he would go here or he would go uh, more precisely here to say that, okay, the total supply of the, the, the coin is 100. And then he would say, say, show me the money. Show me that you have 100. So that if someone is uh, redeeming a coin, uh, you can show that you have the money. So basically, it's it's showing it's showing uh, uh, like the the, the equivalent. Uh, so we if we have here, show me that it's equal. So he look he looks at the bank account. It it, it looks at the bank account or yeah, in uh, or uh, at the uh, are you uh, oh in the box? Register, yeah. huh? He sees hundred. And he, he sees there. He sees hundred. And that's the audit. That's the audit. The transactions in themselves are, fully, happened are fully auditable, but I mean, it's fully safe. You can't, you can't those are fully safe. Those are fully safe. Those are on the blockchain. So unless someone is uh, able to, um, to crack the blockchain, uh, you can consider that it's, it's safe. So you could do some tricks uh, a double spend, etc. I won't go. So the transaction is is really saved af after a few minutes, uh, but for the bar it would be okay. Um, but uh, basically, because it's a public blockchain, it's decentralized. It would be very, very, very costly and difficult to uh, say that uh, no, I have the coins. No, you have the coins. Uh, I, ga I gave it to you. No, uh, it's not true. It's 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 uh, it's written on on the blockchain. I can y show you the. Um, so if I take here a transaction I did. Uh, so I at at the given time. I sent zero dot one coin to another address. So you recognize the address of the smart contract. It's here, uh, Philip, and you see that my address sent to this address this amount of coins. It's written in the blockchain forever. So it's fully safe. Uh, how do we how do we calculate um profits so how are we going to account for profits because if we buy a beer for one euro at the brewer let's say and we sell them here for two euros we have like a one percent margin let's and in fact what we could do is we could push our taxes forward if we do by keeping it on the blockchain because no auditor is going to calculate each transaction it's just going to look at the final and the beginning amount, and if we keep our profits w within the system, we don't pay taxes on it. Or, or am I wrong? Go ahead. For the moment, um, what the blockchain does, it just replaces the the cash register that we have. Yeah. So so that that cash register does not calculate profit and things like that. It's just totalization of the money coming in. That's the amount. I think we have to keep it like that for, for, for step one. Uh, because uh, I, I can imagine that if you want to calculate profit, then you have to know what the cost of that beer was. And then you have maybe based on, on your profile, have a special cost. 12% or 15% that you will add for the service, depending on your pro but that will make a, a, a smart contract that is very complex. Uh yeah, this is not what we try to solve yeah. here, but the system that we're building, it's an internal system that is not 
taxable for and for outside. Uh, no, no one, no one will know that. No one will see that. Yeah, yeah, but the the transaction itself, you know, I, if I sell a no, no, if I if if I go to the if I go to the bar, and I pay, and I put in the cochon, huh? uh, the money, which is basically what you do when you scan and pay, okay, there is no recording of this. There is no recording. Yeah, which which may be which may be a, an issue because if you know my address, you you'll see that I spend a lot of money on the account of the bar, which is not what I'm supposed to do in the in in the day, which is one of the problem of the blockchain. No, I could have two addresses to avoid that, or many addresses. That's what we do in the blockchain world, in the Bitcoin world. Every transaction is with a new address, and you manage a thousand addresses. It's on a computer, so what's the heck? So yeah, yeah, there are some issues. But to get back to your point, it's just we we get a much better traceability of what's going on, even up to the point of being uh, too transparent yeah. compared to cash. Now, um, concerning the beer, the beer has b has been consumed, so therefore you should pay tax on the on, on the profit you've made on the beer. That's fine. Imagine now a second example where you give me 15 minutes of your time, I give him 12 minutes of my time, and, 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 and then Yanael comes and, and he can, with two minutes of his time, everything is, 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 is so. And, and we want to play with, 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 with that time that we share amongst us. That time, it's so immaterial that I think we should, you know, you could, you could delay the the taxes you are going to pay on it, you, you, you know, you don't have to send an invoice on, on, on that time. It's just like it's bothering, yeah? You just, you give me 15 minutes, I give him 12, give another two, and I, s and I keep one minute for me. Mm. Um, so, I, if I may say so, uh, Ludovic is keeping a list of resources on local currency. Uh, one of the resources is a book that I have on local currency systems that are used uh, in particular in France. And in France, they say, as long as, as it is not really professional, they allow this uh, ex exchange of service uh, without taxes being levied on it. But it's because, uh, but th they are very specific it cannot be professional services. So we, we would have to cast this as something which is not really professional, uh, but I mean social of, uh, I don't know whether there, there, there is a specific legislation for Belgium, I'm inferring what is, what is done in France. They have a special law saying as long as you do that, because it's actually battering and you could say, uh, oh, or you it's a it's a transaction like another one, a financial transaction like another one, and you would s you could say well, but you have to pay taxes on that. Uh, but they say as long as it is not really professional services that would have been paid uh, via an invoice, etc., uh, it's good enough. So we would need a lawyer to help us a little bit to uh, to to set the correct frame about this. But I imagine that you. That, that I use your services in the end to create a product that I will sell, there will be tax on that. Because I, I'm going to send, a, you, gave, you, you now gave me 30 minutes all, and, then, 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 then and I sell it for 500 euros, I will be taxed on those 500 euros. So what we need to, def to, to, to understand here, and I don't understand it yet, is, is, is that enough? That I've sold my services, I, I sold the product that we all build together. Everybody builds a little bit, but I sold it. But we pay taxes on it. Some th there is an entity paying taxes on it. Well, in, in theory, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you should account in your accounting the fact that you have coins and that those coins have value, and that you have made a transaction. Uh, actually, at the Belgian Bitcoin Association, we do not have a bank account. We only have uh, bitcoins, a wallet with bitcoins. It doesn't prevent us to do our taxes because we, for the small uh, uh, talk, we collected the um, 
the fees, the membership fees in bitcoins. We never use them, <laughs> and, and so we got rich uh, because uh, just leaving money, even at six thousand euro uh, by bit bitcoin, it's still uh, money. Um, but so we we have to pay taxes, uh, and when it was Can very at, w at at a given time, uh, even if we are uh, visit way, uh, you visit way have to pay taxes on their patrimonium somehow. I was not aware of that. And so <laughs> the accounting <laughs> said, well, <laughs> uh, maybe you are liable <laughs> uh, of taxes. Uh, but uh, so then now the, 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 